three. Two. Last breath. Good. We'll do next breath. You can sit up. Sit down onto the leg, onto your left side. Last pose we'll do. Both legs come together. It's everybody's favorite. Bend the knees. Take hold of your ankles or toes. Yep. Uh, my name is Brandon Copeland. I am founder of Kepra Wellness Yoga Studio. Uh, I graduated from Howard University where I started Kepra Wellness, which was just more of an idea than an actual company. Um, and the idea was to provide yoga and wellness classes and spaces for black people. Kepra Wellness is our yoga studio. Brandon created it while we were um, in college. Breathe out. Inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. He had just had his son Lennox, so he was looking for a way to de-stress and got deep into yoga. We noticed um, so many people in our community that wanted to do it with Brandon specifically that we were like, hey, we should start a studio. You know, discovering myself and discovering that I loved yoga and wellness um, kind of coincided with me thinking that there should be this space that was provided for people dealing with trauma, especially black people that look like me and that were, you know, coming to, coming to the forefront, I think, of the community conversation. And it just became a huge thing. Everyone loved his practice, loved our family story of how we created it. It's great to see how much it's grown with our family. So I'm really proud of it. Um, yeah, so then we have that. We, and we work outside day. of our home. Washington, D.C. and large cities like that are, are great for um, work sharing spaces, but a lot of it is just done at home around the kids. But those are the outdoor afros. My first major screw up was thinking that it would be easy. <laughs> It was not easy. Exhale, notice the spaces where you can relax, even in that discomfort. When I first got into it, I wanted to be different and wanted to provide something different, but I didn't know that that would be able to make me money. And so for a while, I tried to be like all of the other spaces. It doesn't work with yoga. Like I had to give of myself, the business model that I was trying to present. Like I had a house class that failed. You'd think it'd be great. Nobody wants to do yoga. The house is too fast. You know, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go through these sacrifices to get to a space where it connects with people. And so one of the big successes that we had was Trap Yoga, where it was like, okay, let me stop thinking from the perspective of business to, to, to consumer and think consumer to business. Like how would I want to take a class? Then left hand comes up, hips can lift. Yeah, see, there you go, very good. Left hand reaches. Now let the left hand continue. Curiosity. Trap, trap yoga is power yoga that is set to hip hop music. So trap music specifically is heavy bass music from the South. And so you can feel the music as you practice within the class. Um, and that music reflects the pace of the class. So we try and do faster poses with faster music. And then as we slow it down, we slow the music down. Um, all bass heavy so you can feel within your body kind of what's going on. Um, and then it's ended with meditation. Put the hips down, hands here, take four breaths like that. Eyes looking forward. Okay, so there, there's a business theory that we use called blue ocean theory. If you imagine everybody's a shark, right? And we're all going for the same type of fish. There's red oceans and there's blue oceans. And so the red ocean is where everybody is. So in our studio model, everybody has a studio. Everybody has, you know, this nice space. Everybody has all these things for you to go into. Everybody looks a certain way. Everybody markets a certain way. And so for us, the, the yoga industry was a red ocean. And so the way that we decided to attack it was to go and become more niche and become look for a blue ocean, open space, things that people aren't paying attention to. The African-American community was deeply underserved in not only the way that yoga was being offered, but in the way that it was being marketed. Like it's one of the greatest marketing tools I have is my skin. When you see me, you're like, oh, that's a black yoga teacher. The, the ability for people who look and feel like each other to be in one space is I think what's made it click for a lot of African Americans. Now, like when I put that post up about the class at the African American Museum in PG, people are my success was trusting my gut. That literally just means being afraid. Like right when you're like, oh, this is this might not be cool. It became you know the the way that we kept finding those blue oceans because we could have stopped at trap yoga, but we was like, no, we want this. Let's just do something different and bigger. And so that's where Black Girl Magic came, and that's you know where these other spaces came. That's when getting into schools 
And the business took off on its own, especially now because we were making a statement and because we're a social enterprise, that's what you want to do. Seeing everything happening around us right in the microcosm of DC, we were like, wow, we should do a regular class where it's all about kind of addressing the things that are going on around us while also taking that space to just breathe and kind of work through it. And that's where Black Girl Magic came from. So it was wonderful. Um, it's still a class that we have now, and it was just, just like our studio, very organic in its growth and birth. We are Kepra Wellness, and Kepra means evolution, right? And so evolution is basically the idea of taking this chaotic state and evolving yourself into this form of pure energy and light, right? It's a, based off of an Egyptian uh, philosophy. And so with Kepra, we, as a company especially, are committed to helping black people in general evolve. The left foot might hover a little bit. Right in the middle of that leg, you introduce yourself to yourself. All right, take a breath. And that's how it first started. In. I was at Howard, and so I was like, well, people are here, so let me go to the people. And so we started teaching classes at Howard. And then we eventually moved into the Dance Institute of Washington and into more concrete spaces. The overhead for paying for these spaces really outweighed our capacity to teach. The Southeast space, the proposal, when are you supposed to be going up to meet with the- The 15th. The 15th, okay, yeah, so we yeah. need to remember to have that ready. So a lot of it was reaching out to other groups and finding partnerships. That's really where the, the strength is. We found so many other groups that also want to work with us to spread our mission of yoga and spread their mission, whether it be food or some other type of fitness, just wellness in general. You are your product. And so, and being true, like the more true that I, I found that I am to myself and what I think should be offered as the person who, you know, is the customer, the more that I'm able to reach my audience a lot more succinctly. So being able to be representative of a hip hop loving young black father, you know, all of these different things that are stereotypically like not yoga teacher, like my product is connecting you to yourself. And so whatever way that I can do that becomes the business model, right? And I think that if you have a social enterprise or you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you want to offer something that's true to yourself, everything that you think is going to have like what you think your role is, what you think you're gonna have to do, who you think you're gonna talk to, how you think you're gonna market to people. If it's brand new, it's gonna change. But what can't change is your commitment to your what you're offering. And for us, that's we wanna offer peace to black people. We're filling a need. And I think that's what you forget a lot of times. And what I what, what was a big mistake. I was forgetting why I was doing it in trying to find money and in trying to find ways that made market sense. Right, and in this, in a social, if it is a social enterprise, like I said, it's different. So you have to throw the market out. You gotta figure out and recreate everything from the bottom up. Like I had no idea that schools would be such a big part of this for us, but it's huge. It's huge, like huge. They can't get enough because we're talking to students and not trying to get them to absorb a practice that they don't know. We're looking to set up new spaces all the time, always looking to extend our brand, extend our service. This is a growing, evolving business, and it's something that we're, we're tending to and making sure that we can, like I said, provide that space for anyone who wants it wherever they are, whether that be online, which are also expanding, um, just making sure we get the word out.